Very rarely do we have new server rack batteries to review. Today we're going to test out the LV Go. Um, another random Chinese name for a battery, which is pretty weird. I don't know what LV Go means. Please comment below if you do. We're going to check it out and see how it differs from the competition and if it's even worth our time or money. Most of these server rack batteries today have the same BMS, usually the same cells, not always, and the same terminals. So far, this does look like a lot of other server rack batteries. So today we're going to rip it apart and see what's inside. So let's get started. First off, this looks like the screen from an SOK or a jack up here, but the state of charge indicator lights, the alarm and the run are all vertical. And then the communication ports are right next to that. So this does look a little bit different than the other server rack batteries, but it probably has the same BMS as everyone else. Next, the terminals are very close to these handles and these handles are electrically connected. So that is a little scary. So when we connect this to a system, we need to be mindful of that. We cannot turn this battery on until the battery cables are connected and we have the covers. It has protective covers, but yeah, this is pretty sketchy. There is not much space right here. Next, we have four battery terminals like an SO Okay, or jack up here. This looks very similar actually the more I look at it, but we need to open this thing up and see what the connection is like between each one and how much current it can handle. If they're small wires, that's going to be a problem. On an SOK, there's a large copper bus bar and it allows for a lot of current to be shared between these, especially if you have a lot of batteries in parallel, that is very important. Next, we have the data sheet for this breaker and it is DC rated, but it doesn't show the DC rating on the front. Next, there's an on and off switch. Oh, was it already on before? Yeah, this looks just like SOK or Jack up here. Look at that. I actually like this better because on the SOK, you have to click through all the menus to get to the state of charge. This one just shows it right in the front. Next, the charge and discharge current is 100 amps in and 100 amps out. And that's actually pretty impressive. Some server rack batteries are limited to 50 amp charge, but this one can do the full 100 amps just like an SOK. And with these terminals, you can actually support that current. Next, I'm not sure if I like the gray. It seems a little depressing to be honest. <laughs> I've actually had this battery in my shop for a couple months now. Not bad, actually. What? This is kind of nice, guys. Let me show you. Now, first off, this has a fire arrestor just like the new EG4 batteries, which means they're probably conforming to a UL standard. Jack up here, SOK, and pretty much all of the other ones do not have fire arresters. Remember, with lithium iron phosphate, a fire arrestor is pretty useless, but it's cool to see that there because we know that they're conforming to some type of standard. Next, I think this is actually serviceable like an SOK battery. These bus bars are connected with screws. We have one, two, Two, three and four temperature sensors. Now these cell holders remind me of the EG4 ones and this bar that goes across the top reminds me of Jack Pier and SOK. Now serviceability can be pretty cool for some people but for most people I prefer welded terminals. The reason being is these can become loose over time. And all of the crimps and the connections feel nice and solid. Yeah, not bad at all. Isn't that beautiful? I love when it looks like that. Just so organized. Now, something I did notice is I don't see a pre-charge resistor like the other server rack batteries. Next, we have an aluminum bus bar. On the SOK, it's copper and it's nice and thick. Yeah, it's pretty solid. All connections are glued and they are using locking nut washers or nuts for everything. Actually, on the top of the circuit board, there is a large resistor. Maybe it's for the pre-charged circuit. We'll have to test that out. Always check because sometimes the nuts can actually go in here and it could fry your board. I heard something inside of here though, so I need to check. Oh! I heard this thing rattle when I picked it up and I'm glad I opened it up because if I turn this thing on with this inside, we could have destroyed this thing. Yeah, I do not like how close it is to this handle. And I don't like these covers either. That doesn't feel good. It is on all the way though. I like the rubber ones better. And there's 16 volts. That's interesting. We're going to use this to measure the inrush if there is any. All right, here we go. Now we're going to turn the battery on. There was 127 amps, but this wouldn't hurt anything. This is not that bad. If this was over 300 amps, then I would be concerned. Now let's not trigger the pre-charge resistor circuit and then measure the inrush to see how different it is. First, we need to discharge the capacitors. You got a pretty good spark with a 10 ohm resistor. Oh, I hate doing this. All right, guys, here we go. 
So some spark, oh, it only went up to 166 amps. Cause that's not bad. Actually, those conductors are very short. It might be the BMS. Um, it really doesn't matter, but it's pretty interesting to see that the inrush is that low. I should start testing it more often because if it's under 200 amps, it's really not that big of a deal. It is still advisable to use a pre-charge resistor always, but that's pretty interesting. Gosh, now I want to test every battery in my shop because that is wild. Operating temperature is negative 20 degrees Celsius. That's good for discharging lithium iron phosphate, but not for charging. So we should probably test out one of those temperature sensors. Yeah, let's do that right now. Imagine dropping a tool on these terminals. That would be horrible. Frozen salt water. We're charging with 20 amps. Now we're gonna dunk this in cold water. Wow, it is not triggering it. Might need to test out the other sensors. Sometimes on these batteries, only one of four is for low temperature charging protection. But usually all of them work. Yeah, this one is not triggering, dang it. Let's put a heat gun to it and see if that will trip it. Oh, look at that. It's a high temperature sensor, not for low. Let's test out some of these other ones. Now, temperature sensor number two in cold water. This one's not triggering either. Or it's at a lower temperature than what this ice is at, which wouldn't be good. Or the software is wrong, we've seen that as well. You'd be surprised what these engineers do sometimes, man. Nothing. All right, let's move on to the next sensor. Now, temperature sensor number three. Sometimes they read the data sheet and they see the discharging temperature and they set that for the charging temperature as well. So they'll both be at negative 20 degrees Celsius. And that's what the label says on there, so maybe they did mess this up. Uh-oh. Yeah, this one's not tripping. Let's try the fourth sensor. Keep in mind, this salt ice water trips these things very quickly if it's set to the right threshold. I'm talking at most 15 seconds. I've tried like a, over a minute for each one of these sensors. And this one's not tripping either. Oh no. Let's try a compressed gas duster and we'll see if we can hit that temperature that they set it at. Okay, we are super cold now. Oh, it works! So yeah, the threshold is not set correctly. They put it too low. That's not good, they need to reprogram these. This is actually the first server rack battery that I found with that low of a threshold. That's very unfortunate. My camera couldn't pick it up. It went to zero and then it stopped. Actually, let's see how low this thing can go. I should have set it in Celsius, I did not do that. The limit is negative 20 degrees Celsius. So let's change it to Celsius and see what we get. All right, here we go. Two degrees Celsius, one degree, negative two, negative seven. Oh, right there. Right when it hit negative 10 degrees Celsius, that's when it was triggered. Yeah, that is not ideal. Well, that's a big bummer, dang. It needs to trigger right at zero degrees Celsius every single time and in a matter of seconds. We've done this on lots of batteries in the past videos and you guys have seen it is triggered in a matter of seconds. The lowest acceptable temperature I've seen with cycle life data is from Battleborn and I think it's negative four degrees Celsius and that is the limit. Anything lower than that and you're just asking for problems. Now the build quality and the hardware is impressive. I think we should keep an eye on this company. If they can fix that, we should buy these. These are nice batteries. But are they any nicer than all the other ones that are available? Not really. It has the same screen, same breakers, same terminals, probably the same cells. I don't know. We'd have to rip this one all the way apart to find out. But most of the cells are good nowadays, so there's not much to differentiate there. It's not like the olden days when we had grade B and used cells in our battery packs. They would sneak them in there but not anymore, that's not the case. Also, this handle drives me nuts. It's way too close to these terminals. They did send out a 12 volt battery, so I'm gonna review that in the near future. But yeah, I would not buy this quite yet. It is a new battery, so they're gonna to have to work out software issues as usual. But I do like the screen. Um, it is better than the SOK because it shows you all the information right when you turn it on. On the SOK, you have to go through these silly little menus to find the battery capacity. This one is convenient like the EG4. Besides that, nothing really special about this thing. So thank you so much for watching and I actually have another server rack battery review coming up soon. So yeah, stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. Bye.